Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, do me a favor. Those of you uh, that I have in class, okay, I posted a link. It's either a link or it's a PDF uh, to an article. So if you don't have me in class, do me a favor. Put your hand up and then one of my students will share the link with you. I'm going to make sure that you have it. You don't have to read it just yet, but it will be, uh, it will come up later in the lecture. So, and keep your hand up until we receive it. That way we know we can uh, uh, stop sharing. Okay, so take about 30 seconds. If you see somebody's hand up, please share the link with them. Star Wars Day, may the fourth be with you. It's uh, kind of a thing. It was a tradition, like the Rose Bowl. Um, uh, but uh, this year, with uh, May fourth being on a Saturday, and uh, I just also kind of given a lot of different directions that uh, that we're talking about uh, school wise in terms of you know things like full child and all these different things. I wanted to go in a slightly different direction, but still related in that sense. And so, like, why would I always choose? you know, uh, Star Wars Day or May 4th, uh, because I like finding uh, the joy in smaller things in life, okay? It's, it's often what kind of gets me through the day, okay? And uh, I'm speaking to you as uh, someone who uh, frequently has to deal with and battle with, uh, with like anxiety, okay? And uh, at times de uh, depressive thoughts. So little moments of joy kind of help me get through the day, okay? Um, and so that's why I want to just, just pivot slightly from what my normal lecture is and, uh, and just uh, have a little different perspective on this. So what you're seeing here is experiencing joy and finding purpose, gauging your willingness to step outside the normal path. So how does this deal with, uh, how does this connect back to conformity versus nonconformity? In a lot of ways, it's... Now, when you're taking a moment away from the path in which you are currently on, um, you know, we live in very much in a culture that says, like, if you're not moving forward, then you're moving backward. If you're not growing, then you're dying. You know, and, uh, and then accompanied by that is the glorification of being overly busy. Okay, something that I am also very guilty of, being overly and, and oftentimes unnecessarily busy. Okay, and so uh, it is for those reasons and purposes, sees, sees, purposes, sees, sees, there we go, uh, that we're going to move forward. All right, and uh, so I've got a guy, here we go. All right, so uh, finding joy, not quite the level of, is it Mary Kondo? Anybody familiar with Mary Kondo? That show's crazy. I get a kick out of it. I mean, I, I, in one hand, I need something like that in my life because, like, you know, those of you that have seen my desk in my, in my classroom. Laugh <laughs> 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 it up. Um, understand that a little organization would probably do me good. Uh, but at the same time, when somebody goes as far as saying thank you to a t-shirt uh, before you uh, get rid of it, I, I don't know. Maybe that's... Uh, Maybe that's a little overboard on finding joy, but hey, kudos to uh, to Mary Kondo for uh, you know for finding joy in her own way uh, and trying to kind of spread that uh, to others. Okay, uh, important to pause and take moments out of our day to discover the simplest of joys, and um, and so I'm very much into uh, to into movie references. And uh, in fact, I um, recently took full advantage of uh, and, and actually uh, exemplified a Ferris Bueller day 
um, in the not so recent past. And, uh, and so one of my favorite movies. And one thing that Ferris Bueller says that life moves pretty quickly. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. And that's one thing that like my older students always laughed at me about. Okay, is, um, is if, if they're working and it's not a time where I am either giving a lecture or uh, doing like direct instruction or they don't need me talking to them and they're okay working, uh, they'll catch me just sort of looking out the window. Right, Claire? Yeah. Okay. And so they'll just sort of catch me looking out the window and they're just laughing. What are you looking at? Like, I just want to be out there. I just want to be out there. I'm a runner. I like to be out there running, hitting the trails, whatever it has to be. Okay. And, and in that moment, my mind is able to sort of exit this building. Okay, I love what I do. But I'm able to exit this building and visualize myself out there running uh, and kind of uh, being with nature. So, um, so it's really my example of trying to stop and look around a little bit. Okay, but different ways to find joy. Okay, next slide. Okay, and so uh, ways I find it through my day. Okay, like I said before, simply looking out the window, um, and uh, then uh, the other thing that I really enjoy. Okay, and and again, examples would be, would be different for you, for me, but the idea is to be intentional about finding joy in your day. All right, is usually if I were, if I when I'm sharing a joke in class. It's not for the whole class, okay? It's for a few. And not, not in a sense where like I'm making fun of people and they don't know it, I'd never do that. But in the uh, from, from the standpoint of, I like reaching a couple of people who understand and know what this is about, and then forcing everybody else to say, why is this even a thing? Okay, and so those of you that are in my class or maybe start to see and understand that a little bit, like, okay, that's why I don't get 90% of what he's talking about. Okay, and so, uh, but when I see like the one or two or three or maybe five faces that like light up a little bit and get it, like, that's joy. Okay, and, um, and uh, even like even in the tasks in which we're, yeah, even in the tasks in which we're, um, uh, even in the tasks in which we're getting ready to, um, you know, when things get piled on to us, right? We talk about how we have, uh, maybe we're, our time is overscheduled. Well, a couple of years ago, I was uh, part of the, uh, I was asked to host the C Factor Talent Show. I'm like, okay, this is just one more thing. One more thing on my, on my list. So, okay, I'm, I'm writing and like two full-time jobs and, you know, full-time dad and, and all these things. Just one more thing. Okay, well, Instead of viewing it in terms of, okay, this is just one more thing, how can I find joy out of this? And so uh, the way in which I find joy was uh, I said, okay, if I'm going to host this thing, I, uh, I host it with Mr. Haywood. Okay, what happened to Mr. Haywood? No one in here? Okay, all right, all right. Okay, and, um, and so uh, he played the, uh, he was like a bad guy wrestler, I was like a good guy wrestler, and at the end, we had this epic wrestling match, right? And I absolutely kicked the tar out of it. You showed us something you have. What's that? You, you showed us something. Oh, what do you say? Woo! Draw
Uh, are we gonna do this? Are, are we gonna do this? What do you have? crickets or cheers, so uh, I decided to go ahead and go for it. And, uh, and so, you know, but again, that's kind of what I'm talking about, right? Is uh, what are the ways in which you can find joy uh, within your day or find even, a, you know, even taking a, a, a task that seems to be one more thing and then just pivoting slightly and say, okay, this could be fun. Okay, this could be done in a fun way. This could involve doing a flying leg kick in front of 30 people, 40 people. Okay, whatever it happens to be, and then smashing his head of the chair. It was awesome. It was real. It's real. Okay? And then, uh, but again, part of that, and the reason why I think it's so important, and the reason why I think it sort of challenges this, is the, the conformity side of this is the over scheduling of our lives. I mentioned how I'm guilty of it, and let's face it, you know, uh, I think everyone in here, you either have myself or Isley, and so you're in honors class, you're like, you know, you're advancing uh, beyond just the regular pace and something that you chose to do on one hand, but on the other hand, it's okay, you're willingly saying, uh, I choose to not have uh, a whole lot of extra time in my day. Uh, to do the stuff that just kids get to do, okay? Because I have to do homework, and then after school I have to go to this club or this activity or this event or this sporting uh, activity, whatever it happens to be, okay? Uh, almost to the point where you don't have moments, okay? And so take that into consideration. And so, um, and so busy ends up being glorified rather as an escape from the monotony of your daily routine. And like I said, I, I mean it wholeheartedly. I love what I do. Okay, like I enjoy this. I enjoy, you know, getting to kind of put on a little bit of a dog and pony show here. And, <clears throat> uh, but not only that, but just the day in, day out routine. But at the same time, it does become monotonous. Right? I mean, we function very much like in this industrial setting, right? Bells and whistles, okay, from this time to this time you're here, then you go on to the next one, and then just rinse and repeat. It's like, then, uh, you know, you guys do this for 13 years, I do it for 30. Okay, so it's like my whole life at times could be Groundhog Day, the movie Groundhog Day. Okay, where he's like sort of stuck in the same day over and over again. 
All right, so it's about trying to find little ways to just pivot slightly and say, well, how can I mix this up just a little bit? How can I you know, find a way to laugh and to smile just a little bit, even if it's at my own expense? Okay, and, uh, and so, and it's not just, and it's not just kids, I mentioned, uh, I hear this all the time, a conversation I've heard recently, uh, just overheard recently actually, between just a couple of adults, right? And let's just, you know, let's just call them Tim and Bill, right? Tim goes up to Bill and says, hey Bill, you know, how's life, right? And then Bill's response is, great, things are so busy right now. Okay, so when do we get to a point where busy ends up being so great? You know, I have, uh, the, you don't have to go into it yet, but on the next slide, I've got some statistics for you in terms of the number of people who are engaged in activities beyond just the normal routine. Okay? Uh, very interesting. I have, uh, one, of, one of our exchange students lives with me this year, uh, Simon, he's a senior, he's from Italy. Okay? And one thing that, um, you know, one thing that he talks about is, like, all the things that American students are involved in. And we understand that as generally being a good thing, right? Because it's the conforming way of doing things, right? And so I have to build my resume so that I can get into a good school, so that I can get a good job, so that I can uh, find a life partner, so that we can have kids, and then rinse and repeat the whole thing. And then hopefully one day retire. Then you can, then when I retire, then I'll do what I want to do in life. Okay? And so that's what he was saying. Things are so great. I'm so busy. Which has got my head scratching. You know, I'm not convinced that busy is good. Okay? Um, understand that as Americans, we have fewer days off than anywhere else in the world on a year in, year out basis. Our productivity is beyond that of any other developed nation. Okay, we work, that's just what we do. We don't take time off. Some of this ties back to like, uh, <clears throat> when the Puritans came, uh, came over um, and, uh, and were moving in new, uh, living in New England. All right, the, uh, the idea and the mindset was that idle hands were the sign of the devil. So basically if your hands were empty and you weren't working, then, uh, then, uh, then, then Satan's going to find his way into your life. And so that became really part of the, the cultural fabric of America, that we're going to work hard. We're going to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps. We're going to work, 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 okay? Oftentimes at the cost of our identity. Now, at you know, also understanding the level in which you all have to compete, it's, I understand, I empathize with the idea of uh, how much pressure you are under in order to perform. Okay, I understand how much you need to create a resume. Okay, um, but this idea has also been projected onto you to where basically every waking minute is booked with little to no downtime, no chance to breathe. Okay, I mean, it's, it's no wonder. Now, you, you might have your own opinions on full time. Okay. All right, but is it any wonder that uh, was the most recent wolf time or they're actually doing like breathing activities and like mindfulness stuff? Yeah. Okay, I mean, it's no wonder why, whether you find it effective or not is irrelevant. The fact that we're trying to, to implement a lot of these ideas, I think is evident of our culture, indicative of our culture's unwillingness to do nothing. <laughs> You know, like, when was the last time you truly did nothing? And you felt okay with it. You didn't feel like, okay, I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing because I should be doing homework, or I should be, uh, you know, I should be uh, you know, helping, you know, clean the house. I should be, uh, you know, preparing for um, this recital. I should be doing, what I, I should be doing something, and I'm, but I'm not. I'm doing nothing. Okay, it's almost to the point where we feel like we're bad people if we're not doing anything. Okay, and I'm not talking about okay, you know, catching up on Game of Thrones, or the one I'm partial to is Cobra Kai. Uh, season two just dropped last week. Check it out; it's awesome. Uh, if you don't have a shirt, you know, it's good. Cobra Kai, never mind. Uh, and um, you know, and so whatever that be, I'm, I'm talking about truly just 
being in the moment and breathing. Just breathe. Yeah? Go back to Cobra Kai. Something Aggie says. No breathe, no life. Very good. Very good advice. Okay, go ahead. Oh, no. Hey. Okay, there we go. Is this it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so I want to look at you know two different ways. You know, there's joy, uh, joy, and there's escape, right? And so, uh, joy. I looked at Merriam-Webster is like a, a, a source or cause of delight. Okay, like I said, looking out the window for me. All right. Do I do I know that uh, that my students make fun of me for it? Yeah, I do. But I enjoy it. It's a cause of delight for me. So laugh away. I don't care. Okay, and um, and so uh, then the idea of escape as a distraction or relief from routine uh, or reality. Okay, and so joy is nice, uh, and not that escape is necessarily a bad thing, but the idea behind it is the reality that you also have to come back to here. You have to come back to now. Okay, and so. Uh, important looking. I think I got some statistics next on the next slide here. Um, did we did we skip over the one with Maybe. the? Um... Oh, is this it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is the one dealing with uh, with participation and our participation rates. Okay, and um, you know it, it's disaggregated in, with uh, several different groups here. Uh, but just you know, just focus on the top one here with all children. So this is all American children. Uh, this is from the Census Bureau, so you know it's just sort of this independent research, no real uh, agenda. Although you always have to understand, you know, origin, value, purpose, limitation, blah 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 blah. Okay, it shows that 35% uh, of high schoolers are involved in sports in some way. American high schoolers. 29%, uh, almost 30% involved in some sort of uh, like uh, lessons, whether that's you know like uh, music lessons, whatever it happens to be, and then uh, another 30% involved with clubs. Now, you know, I know what you're thinking. You know, this re they really can't add. That's that's greater than 100. All right, but what they're saying is that multiple people are involved. In, multiple students are involved in more than one of these activities. Like you're involved in clubs and sports, whatever. Okay, and so. Um, but when you look at it, that is almost, uh, if I were to ask this room, okay, of, of this room of high achieving students, okay, how many of you are involved, you don't have to raise your hands, but how many of you are involved in at least one of these things? And I'm sure it's probably 100%, if not pretty dang close. Again, it doesn't make you bad kids, but when do you have time? Are you taking time to, to, to break that conformity? of this is the path I need to take in order to become, in order to sustain myself as a middle class individual, you know, um, or one day you'll just refer to yourself as a taxpayer, okay? To sustain that path uh, versus breathing, you know? Um, I mean, had any of you ever felt it's like as soon as you leave this building, it's on to the next thing? And then the next thing, and then the next thing, and then maybe you got a little bit of time to eat, and then the next thing, and then you got to finish some homework, and then maybe try to go to bed. Then any difficulty sleeping? Anybody ever hear difficulty sleeping? Show of hands. Okay. All right. Um, now I teach history, so I, you know I'm not I don't do sleep studies, but uh, the little bit that I do know is that uh, if you never give your mind an opportunity to come down, that Getting to bed is kind of a hard thing to do. Okay, finding rest. Okay, joy and rest can go hand in hand. Joy, rest, and purpose can go, all go hand in hand. All right. So, you know, think about that a little bit. Okay, we can go on. Um, <clears throat> and so, all right. So, a couple things. Uh, one thing I want to get a little bit of feedback from you on is first is uh, how are you feeling about. Uh, most of your day really being on a schedule. So I mentioned that mo a lot of you shook your heads yes and say that, yeah, I do feel that from time to time. So you don't have to tell me, but just kind of talk about the person next to you uh, in terms of uh, what are your feelings on that? Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Do you find, are you able to find joy even in the things that you can enjoy things, 
Okay, and I'm looking at a couple athletes in here. You can enjoy things, but are you finding joy in things? Those are two different things. Okay, so talk to the person next to you in terms of that first bullet point and your thoughts on that real quick. We'll come back in about 30 seconds. activities that you're involved in are things that are ultimately supervised. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Uh, what I mean by that is, um, you know, if you are practicing piano, do you only practice piano when your uh, teacher is there? You know, or uh, for those of you that are athletes, do you really only do the sport if there's, uh, if there's a referee or an umpire or a coach in uniforms? Or can you get out and make up your own game even if there's not enough players? You know, it's called the Sandlot. Forever. <laughs> okay, and so uh, so what are your thoughts? I mean, uh, how many of you are involved, are like truly engaged in activities that are unsupervised? Go ahead. Some part of it. Go ahead. Like at tennis, when the coach isn't there yet, we play our own games. We play three versus three instead of doubles or singles, or we play made up tennis games. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Anyone else? Go ahead. When I feel worse for after riding, I ride for fun and not only when I have like a show or a festival. Yeah. That's good. Good. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm always looking at the opportunity to get outside and touch the equipment. Yeah. Feel the grass in your feet? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Go ahead. I uh, practice for auditions and stuff by myself. Yeah. All right. And again, it doesn't make you a good person or a bad person, um, but I just, just wondering with how scheduled our lives are. Uh, do you ever get a ch in the, the offshoot of the corollary of this is do you ever really get to do things because you're choosing to do it or because this is the time I'm supposed to be there? Okay. And so uh, think about that. And if you, if you weren't scheduled to be there at that time, would you still do that activity? And if no, then is it really bringing you joy? Um, other thoughts? We don't have to. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, uh, so joy is great, but the other, you know, the thing about joy is that it's a moment. Joy is a moment. Okay, like when uh, when when Hag when Hagwood burst into here and you know kind of did that whole little thing, uh, that was great, but it's a moment, right? That moment is past. And you're back sinking in your chairs, eyes glazed over, and already starting to look at your clock saying, when, when am I going to get the hell out of here? Okay, so the moment is past. Okay, uh, and so, and that's what joy is. It really is a moment. Okay, uh, purpose, however, is something that can be sustained. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> I believe purpose to be something that is greater than ourselves. Something that's bigger than ourselves. Okay? Listen, getting a job in life, it's a good thing. Okay, going to college, that's a, that's a good thing. 
okay, or receiving uh, trades, uh, uh, trade school training. These are good things. All right, so don't misinterpret what I'm saying uh, by, uh, by, okay, you know, go, uh, go do the uh, Chris McCandless thing. Okay? That's not what I'm saying whatsoever. All right? But, um, but at the same time, uh, the things that you are doing, are you doing it to, because that's just what you're supposed to do. <clears throat> Right? This is just what everybody does, so I'm going to do this. Okay? Or are you willing to take a slightly different path if it means being involved in something that's larger than yourself? Okay? And something that gets sustained over time. All right? And so. Um, and so then, the, what is the difference between purpose and career? Why does this speak to the idea of conformity and non-conformity? And can your career be your purpose? Why or why not? Okay? And so let's take a look at a couple of these questions as well. I want you to discuss, uh, pick any one of these, um, you know, the larger bullet or the, the two sub-bullets underneath that, then we'll come back and do the other one, uh, the symbiotic one later. So pick any one of those three first ones and uh, discuss with the person next to you. And I do want feedback on this one. So take about 30 seconds and, and give me some feedback. Go ahead. to a close <clears throat> and so um, I like this I like this topic uh, because if I were to ask you um, as we sit here right now like what do you want to what do you want to do when you when you grow up and most of you would probably give me an answer if you don't that's fine doesn't make you weird, doesn't make anything, don't worry about it, don't freak out, oh my goodness, and have this existential crisis, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my life. Okay, you're 16, you can change, it doesn't matter. All right, but some of you have an idea, at least, of what you'd like to do, okay? Uh, but I, if I were to ask you what is your purpose in life, I, I might get blanker stares than what you're giving me right now. Okay, so you have an idea of what you'd like to do, but not necessarily who you are. Because purpose oftentimes is tied to identity. Okay, and so, <clears throat> so uh, did anybody answer the uh, the one how this ties back in with conforming, not conforming? Let's go. Let's go with the overarching question. Okay, did anybody tackle this one? Not everybody all at once, please. Yes. Um, well, conformity kind of ties in with career because it's what you're expected to do. Because your purpose in life might not always make you like any money to be able to do what you're supposed to do. So purpose is more of not conformity while career is conformity. In okay. All right. Go ahead. And so really there's this whole thing like how you're talking about like the peers and work ethic and mm -hmm. how that ties into the way things are currently in the United States where pretty much your purpose can be seen ties in with your career a mm -hmm. lot of the time. Mm -hmm when you're not looking at like who you are, what you enjoy. And people, a lot of the times, they turn their career into their purpose, because they're like, okay, this is all I need to do. I need to get money, I need to be successful, and then everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. And that's a very conformist way to look at life. 
compared to non-conformity, but you can look at your purpose and you can say, okay, what can I do for other people? And how can I implement this in my life? Okay, all right, anyone else? Now let's tackle that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so it gets to be it gets to be very interesting, right? Uh, to where uh, I, I I like what I like. I don't know what your name. I don't know your name. Gracie. Gracie. I don't, so what Gracie was talking about in terms of okay, career kind of ties in with uh, conformity. Purpose is a bit more non-conformity. Uh, but both of you brought up the economics of the situation. Okay, and so, um, so why, did the, why does the economics create a problem? Why does the economics get in the way of you following through with your purpose? Libby? You have to be sure that you can sustain yourself, and based on economics, the only way to do that is to earn money. You have to make money so you can buy a house and have shelter. You have to make money so you can go ahead and eat for the whole. Otherwise, it's very difficult to live. Well, okay. All right. Okay. Other thoughts? Go ahead. economics right and uh, so good how about the um, <clears throat> um, how about this uh, this last one here the, uh, the the last smaller bullet can your career be your purpose anybody tackle this one go ahead a lot of the time when people pick a career, it's something that they don't necessarily enjoy, but something that brings them money mm -hmm. so that they can support either themselves or their family. But if you don't enjoy what you're doing, then there's just that idea of it being a job as opposed to something that you enjoy. Mm. So I think in some cases, if it's something you enjoy, then it can be your purpose, but at the same time, if if it's just an obligation, then it's really just another thing that you're trying to get through. Yeah, and so that gets that gets back to uh, that goes back to the path of least resistance, right? And, uh, and that's the one where you know that's the pathway that most of you are on, the path of least resistance. To where? What do I mean by that? Uh, because well, Mr. Ross, we know we know we work really hard. What do you mean path of least resistance? Like this is hard. You know, I'm going to be taking a full load of AP classes next year, or IB classes next year. That's not a path of least resistance. I'm going to be busting my butt. No argument. Okay? But you're also on the path to, okay, on the university, and the university then provides you with options, and so on and so forth, or whatever it happens to be. That's what I mean by the path of least resistance. It's the, it's the least uh, risk-taking uh, option that you could take, that you could go with, you know, at least risk-taking pathway. Okay. How many of you ever heard of the phrase, um, if you do what you love, you never have to work a day in your life? Okay, you've heard that before. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I heard this a little bit differently uh, one time, and I'm not saying, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with it, but it got me thinking, right? And uh, anything that can get me thinking is a good thing, all right? Like, I, I, I love uh, uh, the speech by Jimmy Valvano at the, at the ESPYs 20 years ago. He says, a day in which you laugh, you cry, and you think, that's a heck of a day, okay? And so, uh, and so you know, this perspective got me thinking. And, uh, and it was, ultimately, your job becomes a job. So... It turns into something that you don't love because you have to be there. Okay, I can I can speak to a, a couple of points to that. All right, uh, you know, in high school, I uh, I loved playing baseball. I was pretty good at it. 
okay? Uh, to, the point where, uh, to the point where I was able to continue my athletic career at university. Okay, and I thought, okay, I've loved baseball my whole life. This is going to be great. Then you underst start to understand the difference in the amount of hours that go into playing univers a university level, college level sport. Okay, by my sophomore year, like, this is awful. I don't want to do this anymore. Okay, it was something that I enjoyed, but it became a job. Okay, and... Uh, <clears throat> You know, and then uh, even you know, even with this, with this here, there's nothing else. There's nothing else in the world I'd rather do, in order to take care of the economics of my life, in order to put food on the table for my kids. Okay, this is it. But make no mistake about it, I love June, uh, June 8th. I love June 8th. So I'm hoping that the 7th will be our last day. Okay, so make no mistake about that. If I don't have to be here, who knows if I would be? Okay, but since I have to be, if I since I have to provide for my family, since I have to pay a mortgage, since I have to, you know, have transportation, this is it. Okay, but it is a job. Okay, I'd rather be out. I'd rather be looking out the window and going for a run, or ten thousand other things. Okay. Okay. Uh, one and two. Go ahead. Um, in construction class, when Paris gives us kind of talks about this, he always references mechanics and how they've got it figured out. And he always uses the guy in the bus job, bus garage, Frank, as an example. He goes on about how they've just got it figured out. They'll work the guy in the bus garage, Frank. Mm -hmm. He'll work from like he'll be there from five in the morning till two in the afternoon. And then go to his other job at the local automotive shop, and then he'll go home and fix people's cars. Mm -hmm. He always talks about how they just got to figure it out. They just keep on doing what they love, and they can make money from it. Yeah. And that's kind of yeah. Yeah. Getting back to the idea of your purpose and also your career. Okay. All right. Victoria. You had your hand up earlier. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't necessarily mean you have a career that you find purpose in it. Okay, expand on that. Like, you could have a job that you really, really like, and then it slowly becomes like, kind of hate it. But like, if you can't always get a job that you find purpose in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, not always. I mean, sometimes and maybe, maybe the purpose is taking care of a family. Or, um, you know, maybe the purpose is, you know, uh, getting out of my house so I can take care of myself. Okay? Now things change over time and different seasons of life bring about different, uh, different challenges and different ideas. Okay? Uh, one of the points I was going to make is, you know, I think my purpose has changed a few times, right, over the course of my life. Prior to kids, my purpose was different than, you know, now with kids. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so that, that changed. I mean, my, my passion for my job has never changed. That's why I'm here is different, right? Before, it was more about my students. Now it's for my students, for my children. So the more I can help the Clarkson community become better people, better thinkers, um, better individuals, then my kids are going to grow up in a community full of good people. Um, so my purpose is kind of more, but mostly the same. And then also, I know I get sometimes I get rolled back from parents, but I talk to kids all the time about do you really have to? And Mr. Drow said, you know, I have to, I have to pay the bills, and I have to have a house, and I have to, you know, do this, and I have to do that. Um, I caution kids about just making sure you understand the difference between have to and lifestyle choices, right? Like you don't have to be at school right now. You choose to. That's the path of least resistance because if you didn't go, you'd have to battle parents. You might have to battle cops because of truancy laws, but you always have a choice. You don't have to go to college. You don't have to get a career. You don't have to get a house. You can choose whatever lifestyle you want, but we buy into this conformist idea that it's already set. 
Yeah, so um, uh, then this last bullet here. Okay, let's take a look at this one real quick. Uh, the extent, <coughs> purpose, and personal identity uh, to the, the extent to which they're symbiotic. Everybody knows symbiotic? Okay, it's like the relationship between the Jedi and the Metachlorians. It's more of a symbiotic relationship that's you know, from Obi Wan. Um, <coughs> and so the extent to which um, I, uh, purpose and identity are symbiotic. Okay, we won't do a turn and talk on this, just fly off, fly off the seat of your pants on this one. So what are, your, uh, what are your thoughts on this? The extent to which they are symbiotic. Go ahead. Your personal identity kind of determines your purpose because say that like um, you're really good at math. So your purpose in life is probably going to relate to that if you actually enjoy doing math and if you're good at it, then your purpose is going to from that part of your life. Okay. All right. And so if you have a particular set of skills. Okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> or if you connect yourself to like a, a, a greater purpose, then like traits such as like narcissism and things like that, they'll start to fade away when you think of yourself engaged in something that's bigger than, than yourself really. Mm -hmm. and, and that can connect to personal identity, but like, let's say you care about a, a certain issue, right? a certain issue that's in the United States, like healthcare or something. That could be your purpose to try to improve healthcare. You're taking yourself away from like your own certain goals mm -hmm. and putting yourself towards a, like a, a greater purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And the idea, the idea too, if 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 we're under general agreement that that purpose and, ident and personal identity uh, also are examples of nonconformity, if if you're in general agreement on that, um, then any time that you're dealing with nonconformity, there's going just, it's going to be met with resistance. Um, you know, or I don't know if your generation still uses the term haters. Is that still a thing? Yeah. Okay. What's 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 a better term for? No. Haters? Okay, yeah. that works. All right. So, you know, you'll run into that. Say, well, why are you doing that? Or, uh, or <clears throat> you'll run into folks that will find, you know, th that will perhaps find uh, 15 problems for every solution that you're trying to present. Okay? And so, uh, the purpose that I have found is, uh, you know, I try to combine all different aspects of my life into this one purpose. You know that I enjoy running. Okay? And, um, and that some of you know that I, I, I work a couple, I, I'm a dual career person, okay? And so in my other career, the, uh, the funds that I take for that go for this, the purpose that I have, and that is providing clean water uh, for a group in Africa, okay? And so uh, now there's been times I've had this conversation with people and they're like, well, why, you know, why would you provide clean water in Africa when the people of Flint are still thirsty and drinking dirty water? Is that a fair response? Absolutely. The people of Flint, the, 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 the water is still not clean there. Okay, my response back is, hey, if that's your passion, then you follow it. Okay, I, I think it's awesome that you have such passion for the people of Flint. Okay, I, I encourage you to follow that passion. Okay? My passion's over here. Okay, so it's going to be constantly met with that and, and, uh, and elements of resistance. But are you willing to sort of uh, you know, <clears throat> drive through uh, the haters and detractors because you are looking at nonconformity? Okay, and so, you know, looking at, did you go to the last one? Okay, and so as I'm looking at this, all right, that is, that is my hand in the jug filling, uh, filling you know, dirty water. I'm pumping a well here. This, I was in Africa a couple years ago. Okay, this one, uh, a, well is being, uh, a well is being dug. Uh, this community of about 1,000 people, has no, they have no clean water. And so when I hear the detractors, okay, when I hear people saying, well, you should be doing this and this and this and this, okay, um, and then... Uh, then I, I, I think back to actually being there and interacting with the people. Okay, do you think I really care if someone says, you know, you, you should be doing this instead? It makes no difference to me. Okay, and so 
I run marathons, and the, and the marathon group I run, I run with raises money to provide wells. My second career raises money to provide wells. Okay? And so essentially, I try to unify all the different aspects of my life towards the purpose. All right? And I'll tell you that this, that this day right here, okay, when we struck water, all of my kids being born was the greatest day of my life. Unbelievable. The unbelievable, un, unbridled joy that, that emerged just from striking water in this aquifer about 100 meters down. Yeah, I realize that some people might have problems with that. Okay? But, hey, that's the path I choose. Okay? So that's what I wanted to share with you today. All right, um, any last comments or questions or concerns? No? All right, good talk. We'll see you out there.